I found 11 stocks with the highest earnings yield in the market, all the way up to 38% yield and an average of 14%. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hoke here following up on our highest earnings yield stocks video and highlighting the best yielding stocks in each sector. In our video last week, we saw mostly older, mature companies in energy, materials, and financials, but to help you build that complete portfolio, one that's not overly exposed to just a few groups, I want to highlight the highest earnings yield in each sector of the economy. This is a totally new way of looking at stocks, and not just on that cash flow dividend yield, but the total earnings power of a company. First on our list, the highest yielding stock in the communication services sector, Verizon Communications, ticker VZ also with a solid 7.3% dividend yield. Now the earnings yield, and I'll show you how to calculate this in a minute, that yield came out to 7.5% for Verizon, which is only slightly above the dividend yield. The company is paying out almost all of its earnings as dividends, so you probably shouldn't expect much price appreciation on this one, but that dividend yield is one of the best in the market. The top three carriers dominate telecom in the US with 98% of the market. That's AT&T leading with 45%, Verizon with 30%, and T-Mobile now with 23%. And, and with that kind of market dominance, there's really no reason to start price wars or undercut those industry profits. But of course, the comparison is always here between Verizon versus AT&T. Which, which is the better stock? Both are surprisingly similar though on that balance sheet with around $150 billion in debt against $95 billion in stockholders' equity. But on that equity, Verizon has been able to create $5.18 in earnings per share over the last year versus just $2.57 in earnings from AT&T. So Verizon clearly has the stronger earnings power here and that higher earnings yield. Now I do like the change to strategic focus at AT&T since spinning off those non-core businesses like Dish and Time Warner last year, but for pure earnings power in that communication services sector, it's got to be Verizon all the way. For tech stocks, prices tend to be higher and you don't get much earnings yield except with shares of Qualcomm, ticker QCOM. The big risk on shares of Qualcomm has always been the 20% of its revenue from Apple alone and the fear that one day Apple would start making its own chips. That's still a risk, but longer term and in the meantime, Qualcomm has done a great job of expanding into automotive and Internet of Things semiconductors. Its licensing business is also growing and it remains a leader in that smartphone processors and baseband chips. Now that said, again, revenue is still very closely tied to Apple and its product cycle, which is kind of a contraction right now without a strong new iPhone model last year. So revenue is expected 23% lower for Qualcomm this year. Now, earnings are expected lower before both sales and profits rebound next year. Still though, the company leads the richly valued tech sector with an earnings yield of 7.5% and you get a 2.8% dividend just for waiting on that rebound next year. I explained how this idea of earnings yield investing works in our last week's video, so I don't want to repeat too much here. I'll link to that video at the end here. Click through and check that out because I'll also reveal the seven highest yielding stocks in the market. But there was some confusion last week. A lot of you wondered, why invest in earnings yield at all if, if that's not what you're actually being paid out? Why not just go for that higher dividend yield? And you know I love me some dividend stocks, but earnings yield is so much more powerful because it's that truest measure of your return as an investor. Earnings yield is the total profit return you earn as an investor in that stock. It's that earnings per share, what you own as a stock owner of the company, divided by the value of the company or the price per share. So this is the profit return you make as an owner of the company and it's a great one-stop measure for whether you should buy a stock or not, whether you're getting that best return for your money. Now here I showed you last week that I am using a different calculation than you usually hear for earnings yield, one that uses the enterprise value instead of market value. Here you go to the statistics tab on Yahoo Finance and you'll find the enterprise value of the company. Now this enterprise value or EV is the market value of all the shares, but also accounts for cash and debt on the company's balance sheet. And the problem is if you're not accounting for all that debt the company owes, then you're not getting that true measure of the return or the yield. So here I want to take the EV, then scroll down and divide by the number of shares outstanding to get that enterprise value per share. Here we have an EV for DHI of 39.6 billion and then shares outstanding of 341 million or an EV of about $116 per share. From there you just divide the earnings per share for the company, in this case $14.83 in earnings per share, by that $116 per share EV price to get the true earnings yield. That would be 12.8% for shares of DHI. And I know this just seems overly complicated, but 
just gives you a better measure of true earnings yield, especially for some of these highly indebted companies. I did have to change that measure a little, but found a surprisingly strong earnings yield in real estate with Ashford Hospitality Trust, ticker AHT. As we've talked about on the channel before, you cannot use that net income or earnings for real estate stocks like you do with those other stocks. The problem here is the income statement where you find those earnings of a company. Real estate companies book massive amounts of depreciation on their properties, just a little accounting trick that they're allowed to use to lower their taxes, but that dis depreciation is something they actually don't have to pay. In fact, the value of their properties usually goes up rather than losing money on it each year. But then since they're writing down the value of those properties with that depreciation, it just makes earnings look artificially low and often negative. So instead, for real estate investment trusts, these REITs, we use a measure called Funds from Operations, or FFO. That's going to back out that depreciation and show us the true earnings power of the properties. Now, this FFO number is easy enough to calculate, but you can also get it from the NAREIT data for each real estate stock. We go here to the REIT data tab in the menu, and then we look for REIT Watch, the monthly data on every real estate stock. It's a great resource for trends and data in real estate investment trusts, including estimates for funds from operations, FFO growth, valuations, and debt stats for each company. Now, if we scroll down here, we can find the section for lodging and resorts properties and Ashford Hospitality Trust. We see estimates here for funds from operations for next year are for $1.21 per share. And with the current share price at $4.85 each, that's an earnings yield of nearly 25%. Now, Ashford is a relatively small REIT, but with a strong portfolio of high-end hotels with 100 locations in 26 states, focused mainly on Hilton and the Marriott brands. The hotel space is still recovering from the pandemic, but you can see here that the revenue per room metric has just now recovered its 2019 levels, and the luxury market is expected to see the strongest growth within lodging as travel continues to pick up this year. Now, Ashford did suspend its dividend when the pandemic hit cash flows, but with that recovery firmly in place, I expect it's going to reinstate a payout this year or next. Besides the solid 25% earnings yield you get with shares, a new dividend could boost the share price and put cash in your pocket. Next here is one of my favorite value plays and a stock I highlighted in our top earnings yield video as well, shares of Citigroup, ticker C. Citigroup is the third largest bank in the United States with over a trillion dollars in US assets and 1.7 trillion globally. And despite the crisis at regional banks, big banks have actually been doing pretty well. Net interest income and deposits both grew by more than 2% on a year-over-year -year basis, and deposits increased through that first quarter. Now, this chart is a little busy, but offers a lot of great information, including balance sheet metrics at the bottom. The bank recorded just $264 billion in that held to maturity securities for the first quarter. Now, that's the line item destroying those regional banks, because the fear is that that bond portfolio isn't worth nearly as much as is reported. But with just $264 billion here and liquidity resources of more than a trillion dollars, this bank is in no danger. We also see the tangible book value per share of $84, which means at a price of just $45 each, the stock is trading for just 0.53 times its book value, deep into value territory. And that gives us a strong 16% earnings yield for Citigroup, but you also get that 4.6% cash return just for holding the shares. We're halfway through our list, but what's better than buying these stocks is getting them for free. Investing app Weeble is now offering up to 12 free shares when you get started investing. Shares worth $3 to $3,000 each. I like the research I get from Weeble, but I love the stock simulator feature. The app gives you a million dollars to use in a paper portfolio to track your favorite ideas before you invest real money. Click through the link I'll leave in the description below. And besides those free stocks, you're also going to get a 5% yield on your uninvested cash and transfer reimbursement of $100 if you move money from another broker. Folks, even if you don't think you're going to use this app, click through and get your free shares. In the industrial sector, we have shares of Emerson Electric, ticker EMR, with its 2.5% dividend yield and total 9.3% earnings yield. Emerson is a leader in industrial software, electronics, and controls, but is transitioning the company to take advantage of the trend to automation. It's got strong geographic diversification in sales as well as buy end market. And the company just posted a blowout second quarter with sales up 14% and free cash flow surging 64% on a year over year basis. That's helped boost the earnings yield here to the highest in the industrial sector. Nucor Corporation, ticker NUE, offers the highest yield in the materials sector with a diversified steel company and an impressive dividend history. This company is a part of the dividend aristocrats list, increasing its payout for 49 straight years 
almost putting it on that list of dividend kings. A struggling US and global economy has weighed on steel demand and prices this year, but we could start seeing a pickup as funds from that trillion dollar infrastructure bill are put to work as well as just a general economic rebound next year. Now that said, steel prices may weaken into a recession, but with Nucor, you're getting almost an 18% earnings yield and a 1.5% dividend to wait on these shares. And next on our list is a stock with a 10% earnings yield and 3% dividend, but I wanna explain another reason why I love using this earnings yield to find stocks, because it is so simple. Besides being that core look at your return as an owner, it's simple to find and doesn't overcomplicate investing. Nation, I worked in venture capital and private wealth management for more than a decade. I've seen stock models that use every measure in the book, from quant models to long, complicated cash flow modeling to predict stock returns, but usually the simplest, most direct measure is always the best. But I do wanna get your input on this. What is your favorite measure for evaluating stocks? So let me know in the comments below. What statistic or, or what metric do you look for to determine if a stock is a good buy or not? In consumer staples, we have agribusiness and food products leader Bunge Limited, ticker BG, with its 10.1% earnings yield and 2.9% dividend. While Bunge does 15% of its revenue in its specialty oils and milling segments, its agribusiness segment is one of the largest in the world, helping to manage seed processing all the way from producer purchasing to biodiesel food and fertilizer production. The company is coming off a record year for agriculture and is expecting slower sales and earnings this year, but this is a segment of food processing that will only continue to grow as food demand increases globally. And this next one was actually the lowest earnings yield on our list of seven highest earnings yield stocks. Home builder DR Horton, ticker DHI, at a 13% yield, which gives you an idea of how high that list went. Horton has been the largest home builder in the United States for more than two decades and with a commanding share in its top markets. Market share higher than 10% in its top five areas, including Dallas, Houston, and Atlanta. The rate on the 30-year mortgage has doubled over the last year, which has slowed home sales with just 683,000 sales reported in April, but demand and prices are holding up because of the massive housing shortage. More than 15.6 million new households were formed in the decade through last year, but only 11.9 million new homes were built. That gap of 3.7 million homes adds to the existing shortage for a 6.5 million gap in single family homes. That's gonna mean even as the housing market cools further, DR Horton will still see demand for new construction. Management is guiding to as much as $33 billion in 2023 revenue, flat from last year, but still impressive in this very tough environment. Even on that no growth scenario, the company generates over $1.4 billion in free cash flow and has announced a $1 billion share buyback program, which is gonna help support those earnings per share. Our top yielding stock in healthcare is one we followed through the pandemic, but has come down into value territory. Shares of Pfizer, ticker PFE, with its great 12% earnings yield. While the COVID vaccine sales have obviously slowed, the company booked 5% growth in products outside the vaccine in the first quarter and served more than 250 million patients. Pfizer is on track for 7 to 9% growth this year with a strong pipeline of drug launches in the second half of the year. So here for investors patient enough to wait out that normalization in sales as growth in those other drugs slowly rebuilds revenue from the COVID peak, you're gonna earn a very high 4% dividend while you wait and a strong overall earnings yield. We're coming up on the last two sectors for earnings yield, energy and utilities. But you'll notice that while the total yield on these stocks is in double digits, the dividends are nothing to get excited about. For that cash flow, check out the video here, my seven favorite monthly dividend stocks that will pay your bills. Seven stocks that put cash in your pocket every single month. In the safer utility stock sector, we get a 4.7% earnings yield from Consolidated Edison, ticker ED, and that 3.5% dividend yield while you wait. So obviously utility companies aren't the kind of stocks that are gonna make you rich, okay? It's a regulated market with slower growth, so here you're just planning on banking that near 5% earnings yield using that part of your portfolio for protection and diversification. Con Ed delivers electricity to nearly half the state of New York, and more than five million customers overall, with a great history of dividend growth. 49 consecutive years of increasing its payout. The company is aggressively advancing its clean energy goals, targeting 70% of electricity from renewable sources by 2030, with a massive increase in offshore wind and solar. Now, while that kind of build out is expensive in investing now, it could come through in higher cash flow and dividends in the future. And for one of the highest earnings yield on our list, the highest in the energy sector, 
Valero Energy, ticker VLO, another great dividend stock and total yield investment. Valero is the world's largest refiner and second largest in renewable diesel and ethanol production. It's not quite as integrated as some of the other stocks we've seen, like Marathon. This is more of a pure play on refinery operations, but it does have some pipeline and terminal capacity. And Valero has consistently returned cash to shareholders, with $1.6 billion in dividends and $4.6 billion in share repurchases just last year. Reducing the share count through repurchases means the earnings are shared across fewer investors, increasing that earnings yield. And Valero is one of the strongest on our list, with a 29% earnings yield, along with its solid 3.6% dividend yield while you hold the shares. Get your free stocks on Webull just for signing up with the link below, or click on the video to the right for the seven stocks that will pay your mortgage, monthly dividend stocks that put a roof over your head. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.